Hey guys, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to apply the material properties uh, using Mimic software, so stay tuned. This is the model that we uh, already imported from uh, Trimatic software uh, in the last video. Um, so uh, it is basically included of two components, base plate and uh, the scapula, and because the scapula and also uh, lots of uh, the other bone models that you have uh, in biomechanics area uh, are have heterogeneous uh, mechanical properties. Um, so the best way to apply those mechanical properties is using the Mimic software. Um, so uh, what are, what you need to do is going to uh, the finite element tab um, at this bar. And then uh, choose assign uh, material. Um, so, uh, but first uh, you need to uh, like you need to um, choose the component that you want to apply the mechanical properties in that. Uh, so uh, in my case is scapula, which uh, this is the one scap copy. Um, you need to uh, right click on the scap copy and uh, click materials. So the material assignment is going to be applied on um, the scapula. So for applying the material properties, um, there are some material assignment methods um, which we are uh, going to use like the gray value based method, uh, which is the first one. So you need to choose that. Um, and then, so for some, like all of the bone um, models, uh, for the bone models, you need to consider two material type um, for uh, applying the material properties. Um, the first material type uh, are using for the negative Hounsfield unit values. So basically, Hounsfield unit values are um, like the uh, uh, the density of each pixel of your uh, CD scan. Um, so for negatives, um, you need to use material type one, and for the positives, uh, you need to consider material type two. Um, and also, um, if you want to have a a really accurate uh, model, uh, you need to consider um, the um, two type of material of bone because each bone uh, is considered um, it, uh, is included of um, two uh, section like the cankylous bone uh, and also um, the soft parts of the bone um, anyways um, so for how uh, to apply the material properties, uh, you need to know that what is um, each section. Um, so this is the gray value range. Uh, it has a minimum and maximum Hounsfield unit uh, for the first material part because you want to um, define the negative Hounsfield unit values. You need to consider this uh, maximum at uh, zero. And start uh, and for this one, uh, it automatically the software uh, co considering the uh, CD scans, the software automatically um, consider the maximum number two. Um, the number of materials are uh, arbitrary to choose, um, but uh, the larger number of the material that you consider, um, the better. Uh, you can see the distribution of the uh, density uh, in the uh, material editor part. Um, so for applying density, um, there is a two, uh, if you uh, like hit the density, there is two way to apply the density um, on your uh, bone model. Um, so the first one, um, which I uh, already uh, checked, 
um, you need to uh, define a minimum and maximum density uh, for uh, the minimum and maximum Hounsfield unit, respectively. Uh, and the software automatically fills be uh, everything between um, like the pixels. Uh, but in this method, um, as you can see, um, you actually define a relation between uh, Hounsfield unit a value and density value. So for each uh, single pixel with a certain Hounsfield unit value, we, uh, we can uh, get a certain uh, density value for each pixel. Uh, so I think uh, it makes the model more realistic with uh, more accurate results because uh, that way the old scapula don't have uh, the exact same upper and lower bounds of density. Uh, so if you know the um, relation between household unit and the density of uh, your bone, like it's different between uh, bones, uh, it depends on bone to bone. So for scapula is <clears throat> uh, the scapular relations uh, are different uh, for another uh, bones. Uh, so after uh, defining the uh, relation between the density and house fill you need, you need to uh, define um, the relation between um, like the uh, the young modules and the uh, density and also uh, the new and the density uh, so you need to look up uh, uh, these uh, parameters and relations in uh, literature and then apply that uh, there is uh, some other method using phantom uh, method uh, for getting the uh, relations between uh, density and house fill units, uh, which I'm gonna make another video, uh, like separate video for that for you guys. Um, so yeah, basically this is how you're gonna uh, define uh, the material properties for the heterogeneous bone model. Uh, and in, in this part, uh, you can see the histogram, and if you uh, you, the best way is uh, choose both to see the elements and material together. Um, so after defining your uh, the both uh, material types, um, you can easily just uh, hit apply. And uh, after you hit apply, after like ten seconds or so, um, the bone uh, like um, the the component that you already uh, apply the properties and define the properties for that uh, is going to um, be like colored um, so you can see the different color as uh, different material pro properties uh, in your uh, bone model uh, and then you can easily uh, close the window and uh, like um, export your uh, file um, so for exporting um, your file to a finite element uh, analysis software, you need to go uh, to the file tab and export. And if you want to export, import your um, uh, model to Abacus, you need to um, hit Abacus and uh, this window uh, will pop up. Um, in this uh, section, you need to consider mesh because you want to export mesh and import the mesh um, to the abacus and um, yeah, uh, like do the stress analysis um, to a Erfan mesh. Uh, so in this section, these are your components. You need to um, consider uh, all of your components and then click uh, add here. So these are the components that you want to export. Um, this is a directory that your um, Mimix file um, is already exists. Uh, so you need to at first uh, like uh, save your file um, as a file. Uh, so save your Mimix um, model as a file, and then and then um, uh, 
uh, navigate uh, this output directory uh, to the uh, that navigatory that uh, your uh, Mimix file is already exists. Uh, and the output format is IMP file, where I double this file. And the trick here is uh, if you want to um, export IMP file, you need to check both uh, the single output file and create assembly. So uh, that way, um, the software produce just one uh, IMP file and you can easily import that IMP file uh, as a model uh, into your Abacus um, software or finite element software. Uh, and then uh, easily hit uh, OK. So this is, um, suffice to say, this is um, uh, the way that you want to apply the material properties on your model um, and then export the file from Mimix to Abacus or another uh, finite element software. Hope uh, this video will help you guys.